blood to a tumor and it dies. Please join with me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 9th. Public comment period. Everybody from the public wants to speak. Well, thank you. It's been quite a week for me, just so you know. Um, I came in here tonight because I want to say thank you to our uh, public safety and particularly our firefighters for the job that they did uh, last Thursday night. Um, many of us see fires on TV but we don't get to see them as close and as personal as I got to see last week. It really was incredible. I get to see um, guys going down an aisle, an alley with a shield over their head, with a hose, trying to protect the assessor's property next door. He, they, were, uh, they were unbelievable. So I can't say enough for what, what they all did. On another matter, last week I was not able to attend the Experience Hampton board meeting. And that night, uh, Rusty, I guess, resigned from the board. He stepped down. And I have to tell you, if, if I was there, I wouldn't have accepted that. <laughs> but let me tell you about Thursday. Thursday, to see Rusty down there in this fire, kind of lumbering along, <laughs> holding his water bottle. He, he was like the water boy, <laughs> going around, checking on his guys, you know, making sure that they were okay, making sure that everybody is okay. And I, I just wanted to know, for a lot of us, we appreciate what you do for, for the town. You're, you're kind of amazing in your own quiet way. Thank you. And finally, a little humbling, Hundreds of people have come up and said, Bob, what can we do? What, what, what do you need? And, uh, you know, we're pretty fortunate, but I, I know what I need. I really need for people to find a way to say thank you to our public safety and our firefighters. Many of you know that I'm on the board of, or have been on the board of the 100 Club of New Hampshire. I'm a past president. For the people at home that don't know what the 100 Club does, in the event of a tragedy, the 100 Club goes to the families right away with a check for $20,000 to the spouse, gifts for the kids, summer camps for the kids, and college. And the 100 Club never, ever, ever goes away. Many of our children we're very young. I have a couple of kids in a hundred club that their father passed away before they were born and we got to see them go through college. So when you say what do I get from the hundred club, you get a little pin. You get a little medallion on your car. And it's a nice quiet way to say thank you to these guys that spent all this time taking care of us. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Anybody else for public comment? <coughs> Just let us Hi. know your name and address, sure. if you would, please. Hi, I'm Madeline Lynch. I live at 8 Green Street in Hampton, New Hampshire. I've lived there. My family's owned the property for 65 years. And I've appeared before the board before. We've spoken about the flooding issues that continue to de just devastate this, this neighborhood. And I'm here tonight to speak about the tax abatements that a number of the residents in the neighborhood have, have applied for, which I understand, speaking to Mr. Tinker this morning, that it is on your agenda <coughs> tonight to address the tax abatements. So. I want to encourage you to continue to support the neighborhood because we're all dealing with the flooding issues in Hampton, but 
You know, when it's close to home, it really makes a difference to us, the quality of our life as well as the assessment on our properties. There's no doubt about it that, you know, the, ta the last tax, tax assessment was done in 2016. My taxes have done nothing but go up, which I'm willing to pay. I understand the town provides a lot of support and services that we as beach residents need. But, you know, to continue to see the flooding be as devastating to my neighborhood really, you know, forced me into asking for an abatement. You know, whether it's $100 or $500, I don't even know what it could be. But I would encourage you to support the abatements the people in my neighborhood have applied for because the flooding, even though the town has made some progress in doing some dredging, it has not abated. I have some pictures if anybody um, would like to see them. The flooding continues. I mean, this winter was atrocious. You couldn't even drive down to the end of Green Street because the ice and the water had flooded and had frozen. I mean, it, the ruts were so deep, not even an SUV could get through them. I had neighbors actually stop and park at my property so that they could trudge through the ice and the snow to get to their properties. So um, I know the town is doing the warrants to address the flooding and do a study. But in the meantime, I think it would be at least a message to the residents that we hear you, we support you, and you know we're going to help you in some way, whatever that might be. I'm not really sure, but I certainly hope that the board can address that tonight and approve the abatement requests from the residents in my neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Does anybody want to see the pictures? If you had copies of them, you could enter them oh. into the record, but. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll so. copy them for next time. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Or email them to us. That would I can email them, too. Yes, that would be the way to do it. I see you had it on your tablet, so. Yes, thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Pull your microphone down a little bit. Oh, gosh. Because the viewers at home yeah. really want to hear oh, you. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I live at 9 Green Street. Um, I don't live there. It's a summer residence for us. And like Madeline said, we, we um, definitely have lost property value. I've lost revenue. Um, we have to rent our cottage. We, we, my dad left it to us, and um, we're not rich people, and we have to have the little house pay for itself. And what's happened is the flooding has just uh, defeated any interest. People will come to see our little house. It, it's a, a lovely little cottage. And they can't get down the road to come and ap apply. I had four people last spring. Um, I, I understand that this summer there was a great effort with pumping. And it was successful. But in the spring, unfortunately, they, there wasn't anything being done. So that's Memorial Day was horrid. And that's a big drive-by for renters. I have to rent it myself. I can't afford a, a realtor. And it was so disheartening to find out that people that really wanted to come and see us our little cottage called and said they couldn't get down the street but I have I actually have movies that I should have brought for you before of Madeline's house I was able to be up here and put on my hip boots and go in and try to get as far as I could I couldn't get to my home but it was probably not a smart thing to do to be alone down there if I had fallen and the the water was that deep of course I'm not that tall but at the same time the, the point that I think I'm making is that don't forget us that that's the biggest situation um, when you can't get into your your property that you're concerned about and I know that the water level 
had gotten right up under the floor of my home. And I have a, a FEMA certificate that I passed and got the discount. But when I saw some of the houses in my neighborhood that were basically under, their foundations were under, and I empathize with everyone, and especially down on the beach. They really have a horrible situation, but so do we. And if, you know, I lost $5,000 worth of revenue from people that said sorry. And my, I have a renter that has come pre-season. Oh my, we've had it for 60 years. And I called and said he couldn't tolerate the flooding anymore, the water. So if we could just be considered, like Madeline said, it doesn't matter, you know, how much, but the recognition of what's going on. We pay our taxes, and last year was really hard. Um, it was um, it was a, a family effort to get the taxes together, and I have two brothers that aren't as, you know, in love with the, the little beach house that we have. So it's called, caused a little bit of sibling, hmm, why should we keep it if not, if it's not going to pay for itself? And that's what happened last, last for this 2017. But that's my, my plea. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else from public wishing to speak? Seeing none. Announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Nothing at the moment. Jim? Uh, today, 1912. Red Sox first game in Fenway. Uh. <laughs> there you go. Jim. Also, the Titanic sank. That's right. Things you need to know. Rick? <coughs> um. <coughs> Again, I would like to just uh, say that everyone was excited to see what a good job the fire department did. A lot of people talk about it. I heard a lot of people mention it. So, thank you. I can say ditto for that. Uh, also, uh, this Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Ocean Gaming, the Experience Hampton has their <coughs> nights down there. So, if you like to partake in... In, in a little gambling, uh, that money goes towards helping the Christmas parade and such. So, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Ocean Gaming. Okay, approval of minutes, March 26, 2018, non public. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. There's a second. A second. All those in favor? Unanimous. March 26, 2018, public session. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Consent agenda. Do you want to waive reading all that? There's a lot on here, but <laughs> there is some that people like to hear what's on here. So, okay. uh, Permission to, for emergency access to the town beach for repairs at 47 Ocean Drive. Appointments to the Conservation Commissioner. Dino, uh, Diener Sicatoro as members, alternate as Vinter. Appointments to the Mosquito Control Commission, Kaiser and O'Connor. Appointment to the Highway Safety Committee, Douglas. The merger of Local 2664 and Local 3017 of the Fire Department Unions. That will be the two locals into one unit with still two contracts. Parades and Public Gathering License, American Legion, Post 35 for Memorial Day Parade. Permit for Town Use Property to Electronic Sign, Century Bicycle Event. Taxi licenses, Ava Taxi. Taxi operator's license, and there's a number of them. Request with no objection to serve alcohol, RSA 178 to, uh, 12 beverage manufacturer's license for finest kind brewing, DBA Smutty Nose Brewing. Request for no objection for service of alcohol, RSA 178 21. Restaurant, beverage, wine, liquor license, Ocean Gaming, <coughs> finest kind. DBA Hayseed Restaurant. Request for no objection for alcohol, alcohol outside finest kind brewing 
DBA Hayseed Restaurant. There is a new veterans credit, John Hool. Well, I'll just read. There are a number of new veterans credits, uh, new veteran spouse credits, and new elderly credits. And that's the Senate agenda. I'll uh, move that. I'll second it. All those in favor? Well, before we take the vote, Mr. Chairman, if I may, the request for the service of alcohol, et cetera, related to the Hayseed restaurant, are we progressing anywhere on the uh, – actual um, smutty nose fees and uh, have we finalized anything yet? Are we going to have them in here? It just reminded me that that's kind of ongoing. I, I don't uh, have any problem with them serving alcohol in the restaurant. should bring it up under old business. Uh, oh, well, I'm, I just well, remember That's why there's a thing that says old business. This. That's what old business okay. is. Well, when we get to, we'll get to the business, old business, we can we'll address bring it up. It. Yep. So well, I made that motion. motion he seconded. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. <clears throat> Appointments. <laughs> Renee Boudreau, <laughs> Director of Parks and Recreation. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you very much. So, as you know, there's been a little bit of transition in our department. Hmm. Um, so I'm just under a full month in the seat. So there's uh, still some getting used to everything and seeing where exactly the department sits at the moment. Um, so to update, kind of a quarterly update, as far as our programs go, I'm just going to hit on a couple ones that are very popular that everybody seemed to talk about. Um, we have a high school rec basketball program that plays on the weekends over at the high school. And we had six teams this year. We get volunteer coaches. Um, some of them are parents of kids that play, and some of them are volunteers um, that like to do it just because they like basketball, and they have little kids growing up in the community, and I think they're going to think they're going to be high school rec basketball players when they grow up. So they enjoy the program. It's pretty much the first week <coughs> of January through mid-March. Um, it's on Saturdays. The kids don't have to practice. They have a practice spot. They show up on Saturdays. They play their games. And this year we were lucky enough to get Brian and Channel 22 to video the championship game, which the kids have a blast watching. And also we had some commentators this year that were very uh, colorful and energetic and liked the game who also coached one of the teams. So that's a fun program that everybody seems to like. Another one that is catching up or catching steam, I should say, is our Connected Elephant program which is for younger kids, we have K through two and then grades three through five and it's run by Amy Hansen and Meg O'Connor. Um, and they've been certified through this Connected Elephant program and they've been running ongoing programs for the rec department for the last year and a half, two years. Um, and that class usually fills up, there's usually a wait list um, and they're also gonna be running three programs for us this summer. Um, they started last year running summer camps for us, and they've had a good turnout with that. So they're going to be coming back with three weeks of camps this year for us. Um, as far as the rest of our programs go, we're always ongoing. Um, what I recommend people do is go to the HamptonRec.org <laughs> website. Um, I could list everything we're doing, but it would take a while. So as far as our programs go, we have a listing for everything through summer at this point. Um, as far as special events, we did our Easter egg dig as usual. Um, weather, Mother Nature wasn't cooperating too well with us. So on the day of the event, I stepped on the sand and it was like ice. So it was a little hard. So that took a little more effort than usual to bury 12,000 eggs. Oh, God. So on that hand, I have to thank the 50 plus volunteers that spent the time to bury all those eggs for the kids. Um, it, like I said, it took a little longer than usual. We had to move it a little closer to the water, which I personally didn't want to do, but because of the conditions we had to, so we just have to make sure that we're very um, regimented on the cleanup to make sure nothing makes its way to the water. Um, this year I had people approach us about doing a beach cleanup directly following the Easter egg dig to try to combat any random eggs that might make their way <coughs> that somebody misses somehow because 12,000 eggs seemed to disappear in about five minutes with that event. Um, the weather was beautiful. We had a great turnout. So uh, looking forward for next year, we're just coming up with some ideas on the environmental side to try to nip some of those things in the bud. Um, 
upcoming on May 12th, we have our annual fishing derby. Um, I just contacted Keith Lassard about any issues he has with us using the property. We usually have free reign of that for the day. Um, if he has any concerns, he gets in touch with me ahead of time. Bachelor um, Pond. Renee. Yep, Bachelor yeah. Pond. We also get the state permit from Fishing Game, and we purchase a set amount of fish, and the Fishing Game will match whatever we purchase. So that's kind of the uh, special event going forward. And a little further into the summer, we're doing our annual, I'm going to call it the annual tuck field camp out. Um, last year we had a good response. This year we already have 21 people signed up and we haven't really put it out there yet. Um, so I know going forward last year um, we were going to need a permit or get permission from the selectmen to have a fire. I mean we only have little fire pits but that kind of got overlooked last year so this year I want to make sure I get permission from the right people in order to make that happen and that was just it wasn't a bonfire, it was just two little fire pits kind of throughout the park. Um, as far as our trips go for our seniors, we try to run one or two every month. I listed a couple of what we've done since January. Um, a lot of those are ones where people just call up and they say, hey, we're interested in doing this, and I have a group of people that want to do it, and we need transportation, and, and we need a driver that knows how to get through Boston for this one in particular. Um, the others are reoccurring trips that we've done for years through the department. And it shows on here that we just sent a group to Nashville, Memphis, and New Orleans through Collect Tours, which is a Music City tour. Uh, we sent six people on that one. And our new program coordinator was, uh, I guess you could call it, initiated into the position by having to pick up those six people at 3.30 in the morning last Friday morning <laughs> in the rec bus to meet the loan. So... Um, they're returning this Friday. And then we also have a travel show on April. It's actually at April 18th for a trip through Collect Tours to go to Madrid and Barcelona, which is going to be in the fall. Um, kind of looking forward, we've started applications with our summer camp staff. We find out who's returning, who's not returning. Uh, as far as new programs go, we just hired the new program coordinator. And it's kind of a weird position for me to kind of give the reins over after being in that position for so long. It's kind of kind of interesting. But he's got fresh new ideas. Um, he's a little bit younger. He's got younger kids, so he kind of knows what the, the younger kids are after, as where I don't have a little one. So he's got some cool ideas there. It's just a matter of how we're going to put those into play and when. Um, and I'm also going to be doing to try to figure out where we stand in our parks. Um, I'm gonna call them park walks, where I'm walking through with our park staff to see what immediate issues we have and what we need to address first as far as a safety standard go with some of this equipment and some of the fencing and field um, care issues. So we have like the youth association starting at the end of this month. We wanna make sure that you know the fences are fixed, the bathrooms are running, there's no issues with the ball fields that have a immediate concern for that. So we want to fix all that so that's up and running and good for opening day for them. Um, also, it shows the Kids Kingdom Warren article. Um, I talked briefly with Fred today on that. We have uh, the allotted amount of money. It's just a matter of figuring out what exactly is going to replace what there, I guess, because yep. what I'm finding is the allotted money could be a challenge to fill that big of a space and make it adequate for what exists now and when we replace it to make it something the same size and something that they have a lot of use of. So I'm trying to see equipment wise how we can get the biggest bang for our buck and fill the most space. Um, and other than that, I would just say, you know, we're promoting the HamptonRec.org website. All of our programs for the summer are going to be on that. And um, going forward with our new program coordinator, we're looking to kind of spice things up a little bit, change the program routine, and kind of try the new stuff, try some innovative stuff, and kind of see where the department goes. All right. Questions? Um, on here, on the senior trips, mm -hmm. uh, Renee, you said just sent group to Nashville, Memphis, and New Orleans. Are you letting them come back? 
that's up to them, I guess. They got to get on the bu on the plane to come home. Um, and on the uh, Kids Kingdom, yep. a number of years ago, or maybe as many as twenty years ago, um, individuals donated to that Correct. little park, and their names were on a a board in the park, <coughs> and that board was taken down and never replaced, but the individuals who donated to that are really, would like to see it put back. Is there a way to do that? There actually is a brand new sign that was replacing that, that exists, that just has not been put up. Okay, and it will have the donors' names on it and right. everything. Very so nice. Congratulations, and we are gonna enjoy working with you, I know that. Also. You did, did you name the new program direct coordinator? We have officially, as of last Thursday, Brandon Madison will be in that position. But you didn't give us his name, did you? I don't think I did. <laughs> I think I waited because against I, him. N n don't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if it was an official okay to give out oh, the name yet. So, oh, so, so I, then I should have shut up. Oh. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, I like your style, and uh, don't be afraid to make it your own. I think you do a good job. Thank, Thank you. you. I like seeing all the, uh, the programs at Facebook. You've been doing a great job with that, and I think that's gonna be a great way to, yeah, to get people, because Facebook isn't for kids, it's for people my age. Right, and, yeah, uh, credit to the staff on that one. That's right, so, yeah. and so they're getting it out there so people will see it, so the grandparents and the parents will actually get out there and see it, so I think right. that's good. And uh, you're, you're participating in the job fair at Winnicunnet, correct? Correct. So uh, just for those that don't know, Winnicunnet is having a job fair for summer jobs for kids at school. Oh. And uh, that's uh, next week. So those parents out there that if their kids want a summer job, it is the 19th? I think it's the 19th. 19th, 11.30 to 2.30. 11.30 to 2.30. So uh, at the high school. So it'll be a great way for the... I think there's like 30, 32 businesses that are participating in it, and they will, uh, the kids will be able to walk around and talk about jobs. So I think that's a great way, uh, a great way to get the kids a little interested in, in, in working around here. So, other than that, you're good. <laughs> Thank you for you're your good. time. All right. Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor. Thanks again, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Ed. I presented um, 11 ab uh, a tax collector abatement as well as 11 abatements for your review. And if you have any questions um, of those, nine are recommended for denial, two for a refund. Refunds totaling $1,129.53. I. I have a question for Ed. Does, is this the appropriate time? Yep. For okay. for, for the, for the uh, denials. Yes, that's what we're talking and, about. The abatements. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a nice lady in the planning office about a week ago who lives down in the area of Green Street and so forth. Okay. And we're all aware of the flooding that's taking place down there. And she was mentioning something about the, the lack of pervious surfaces at the beach. And uh, the beach has been built on and uh, additional driveways and uh, sheds and porches and things have been put in down there, which has possibly contributed a little bit as the problem of draining water comes up. The other thing is that we appear to be entering into a cycle where there's going to be a lot of flooding. Not just an aberration for one year. What is going to happen to the property owners? Has anyone sat down and given some thought to the property owners if that flooding continues to become more severe. What, what will happen to the properties at the beach? Has anybody discussed that? 
um, you know, as, as, as the assessor, I mean, we, we, we know there's flooding. We know there's flooding along the, the beach all the way north to south, especially right. on the marsh area. Right. Um, new construction, of course, as you know, the first level is, is non-living. They Living starts on the second level uh, with anything new being built. Um, you know, assessments are based on the fair market value or the qualified sales that take place. Right. And, and the market as a whole, including waterfront and beach properties, continue to, to increase in value. And if, if, you're, if the new bills are required to have the living quarters on the second floor, what are they going to do when they wake up in the morning and they're happily up on the second floor looking down, seeing their cars floating in the water? I mean, that doesn't seem too sensible to me. Have you had a chance to talk with the planning board at all, or have, has anyone tried reviewing what we're doing? It looks like flooding is going to be a continuing problem, and it's going to be a big problem for the property owners down there. And I hate to see us just sit here without trying to figure out if there's anything we can do. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, is this, yeah. are we talking abatements or are we yes, talking zoning? Yes, because people are going to keep coming in and I can't blame them because this He's is... He's told you it's based on what the properties sell for. Well, what, what are the properties going to sell for with all that water down there is what I'm getting at. And what if it continues? It is what if it is. If we sit here and suck our thumbs... Mary Louise, don't preach to me. I live where it floods. I understand I, it. I don't I think you understand that. that he's here for abatements. Okay. Can, can, can I just please. have a problem yeah. with Go what's I know all about there. the flood. Okay. Yeah. But no, I'm not just, with him. I just to say that, I, that I, I'm going to have to agree with Ed <clears throat> because of the fact that we, we spent money or we're spending money on a, on a study on the flooding. Mm -hmm. We spent money last spring on the flooding uh, or last fall. And... There are so many properties that are involved in the flooding now. If we started giving abatements to everybody who floods, we wouldn't have any money to do the work to, to, to stop the, the flooding. Right. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to agree with Ed that and if properties are still selling, now there, there are three properties, not down in Green and Gretchen per se, but right on the waterfront there that just sold bingo like that. Well, yeah, there's been, a, like I said, there's been a few sales in, in that Green Street neighborhood where they've actually... Again, purchased the property, have demoed the houses, and are building brand new houses. So that are uh, built to withstand the flooding. That's what's going to end up happening in the future. And that's, and I mean, it, I, I'm going to have to agree with Ed. Uh, you know, and uh, no one feels more about it than me. I suffer the same problem. Mm -hmm. And I realize I'm looking to see what I can do to make it different. <clears throat> and I w would hope that there be, when they do do this study, that maybe one of the things that they look at is that is there a way to give people incentive with some type of tax credits to fix their properties? But for people to think that they're not going to have to fix their properties, that's why people are paying uh, uh, huge money for. Uh, pieces of property. Some people like the fact that the water's that close, as strange as that may seem. I think they have a unique problem there, though, because the roads are such a problem, too. Um, and it, you know, but it's amazing that it doesn't matter. The, the flooding starts down on Hampton Harbor. It goes all the way oh. to Green Street. Yeah. So it's not only Green Street. Right. And the people of Hampton have been generous to vote that Warren article in. Um, I hope that we can do something good with it and make it better. But uh, the same reason why it's not fair just to do these uh, abatements so randomly uh, is why we can't give senior citizens a break on Comcast, you know, because everybody else is paying for it. Uh, the thing is, I, I think that's why we need a long-term uh, look at what we can do to some, have some type of incentives, similar to the way there were incentives to rebuild those businesses at the beach that were the burnt-out buildings and stuff like that. That's what we need to look at. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Ed is bound by state law to, to set the uh, things like he does. And 
uh, we can't just, it's not fair to the taxpayers of Hampton to grant abatements unless they fit what the state law is. So we need to look at other projects, like what were those called, Mr. Welch? That type of thing where about the burnt out buildings and redevelopment. There are special incentive pro pro programs. Yeah. That's the type of thing we need to look at. Yeah. And I'm all for it. I think, I, you know, the sooner we start discussing something like that, the better it's going to be for people mm -hmm. like these. I have I make, a quick I make, oh. I make a motion that we go with Ed's. Just let me right. have a quick follow up. I have a motion first. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Okay. A predicate, and I said something you said, Jim. <laughs> have we been giving um, abatements on, uh, how can we put it? Just on veterans, generic. blind people, people like. No, no, I know that. But that's I'm all we do about, abatements for. I'm thinking about flooding. Have we been in the habit of doing flooding abatements at random, or we simply have not done it at all? No, it's, when we do the revaluation, yeah. we, we, again, we, we grade and condition every neighborhood. Right. Um, we use the sales that take place to mm -hmm. do that. Um, th that's really what we look at. I mean, if, if sell, properties are selling within, because I mean, it's not flooded every day, so that's a hard right. thing. That's a real hard thing. Right. So the, mar you know, the market, again, dictates how we grade those neighborhoods, value those neighborhoods, right. and value those properties. So you're looking at this overall. You're not looking at some, some properties in the past have received an abatement, but now there are so many no, properties no one that has. are flooding or nothing like that. And he's like following that. state guidelines. Yeah, so. well, that's what I'm just, okay. We, we, we narrow it down to look at neighborhoods, but again, we look at neighborhoods based on market okay. conditions, so. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? And this is to deny the abatement. Go with Ed's recommendation. Ed's recommendation. Okay. recommendations. Ah, so, okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Okay. Yep. Oops. Uh -oh. Chris? Yeah. Uh oh. No, Jennifer Hale doesn't have Chris. Thank you, Ed. Now. Thank you for the public hearing for tonight. <laughs> That's next week. It's next week. week. Every two weeks. It's every other week. Right. right. Yeah. Please so, help me. I guess Jennifer's going to be speaking because you're not on the agenda, so. We'll put the important people on the agenda. Hmm. Have I told you how much I love the marsh? <laughs> uh, you're swimming today again? A yeah, really quick, uh, if you don't mind, just an update on yep. the Force Main. Uh, they were out there today. Uh, mats were installed up to the creek. Uh, the bedding for the bridges was uh, constructed. Uh, the first two rails of bridges were done and the mats across those um, were completed. Tomorrow, we are waiting for two more pieces of bridge. Uh, the truck that was bringing them broke down because, you know, that's convenient. Uh, so they'll be here tomorrow, uh, but we do hope uh, to be digging tomorrow. You'll be digging tomorrow? We'll be digging tomorrow. Cool. Very good. Is it permissible for us to come down to see it or um, impermissible? Um, the best they can say there is that to remember that it's still a construction site. There is equipment swinging. Uh, it is not somewhere where we can have a bunch of people out on the mats. Uh, so we're working within the confines of the Church Street Pump Station. So it's using your best judgment as a selectman. Okay. Obviously, you know, if you would like to come down, uh, what I don't want to do is make an yes. open invitation right. to yes. the public. No, this is a construction select. site. It is a construction site. Yes. Right. It is a hard hat, yeah. appropriate shoes, reflective gear when we're down there. Yep. So that's where we stand with that. Okay. You have Lafayette Road. <laughs> Would you want me to go? No, uh, uh, I'm just I looking mean, which one I'm on I'm for here, first. I'm your, uh, your request. So. Oh, let's see. Um, Lafayette Road, sewer replacement project. We had a great meeting today with uh, Wright Pierce, the engineers who designed the sewer project, as well as Jamco, uh, to talk about restarting and completing the sewer work. Uh, we are looking to begin our first uh, resuming of excavation on Sunday. That would be April 15th. Uh, this week, they, you'll see them setting up. They've set up their uh, storage yard in the high street lot. Uh, they have to put up the signage for the construction signage. Um, we also may start uh, doing some of the pressure testing and the inverts that have to be built within the structures, things that don't require excavation. As many of you re will recall, 
Uh, we had to suspend last year because we kept running into groundwater and at the end of it we ran into ledge. Uh, so we will be starting in ledge. That is our first uh, hump to get through. Every indication is that it should uh, tail off. We have a few sticks in and we should be out of it as that was similar, but we're still in ledge where the water project wasn't. You know, we're on two separate sides of the street now. Uh, the existing sewer main that we're replacing, as we're getting close to replacing it at the same elevation, it is sitting on ledge. Uh, so we're having to make those modifications, make sure that the proper bedding is there when we're putting the new pipe in uh, and those type of things. I am here tonight to ask the board uh, their permission as it has been uh, deemed night work. Uh, we can want to continue doing night work uh, as there's just too much traffic during the day to be closing down this section of Route 1. Um, when we did the drainage project in 2015, we started at 8 o'clock and we went to 5 o'clock in the morning. And that basically gave them till about 6 o'clock to clean up, which gave them a 10 hour day. It allowed them to get more work done. It allowed them to keep going. Um, in this case, drainage doesn't have services. Drainage, you know, you have your main lines, your structure, your main line. When you're talking about the <coughs> sewer work that we have to do, you have to put in the whole main line and then you have to go back and you have to go back to each property and put the services in. Uh, so I want to get this project done. <laughs> I want to be off the road, you know, for the summer months. Um, our hope is to skim coat it uh, when we're done to take us through the 10, 11, 12 weeks of summer. Um, and if we can begin at eight o'clock, it would, it would really benefit the schedule. And that was, that was the update and what I wanted to talk about. So you need a motion from them allowing you? Yeah, it would have to be a motion from you to allow that to happen. You've met with all the businesses again. They all know what's so going on. So we or? did meet uh, with the owner of 401 Lafayette. Uh, they are aware, um, you know, very supportive knowing it has to get done. Uh, we just have to get it done. Uh, I have spoken with um, Morelli's, you know, to let them know because they've been really great about helping spread the word and be positive supporters. I will get out there this week after I get off the marsh on Thursday uh, and, and personally go see everyone. But it was this meeting so I could know what I'm posting and what I'm telling people uh, before I let the notice out. I'll make a motion that we get permission to start at 8. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Can right. I'd like to talk also. On this? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'd like to say that, you know, the sooner you do it, the better. And you've got to move at a high speed because there's going to be endless complaints. <laughs> there, I can already hear them. Yeah. So, you know, it's just something that has to happen unless people don't want to be able to flush their toilets. So you just have to do it, and you have to do it as fast and as quiet as you can. And that is our goal, and that's part of asking for this extended hours. We just want to get in and get out. We, we understand. Mm. But it needs to be done. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I appreciate getting the sewer and water or drainage lines in. That's, that's excellent. When do you tackle uh, the ornamental lighting stuff? What is your I can't stop. time frame? Um, we started last week. We have a request for engineering qualifications for about five different projects. Uh, the two different flooding areas, that project, um, and I know there's two others that are on it, but they escape me at the moment. Right. Um, so we'll go through an RFQ process. Um, it isn't just lighting for the this this stretch of road. It's uh, drainage, uh, s sidewalks, pavement, pavement, a whole host mm -hmm. of things. Um, so we still have to go through a design process for it. Now, are you comfortable that you have the money in Article 9 to do that ornamental the lighting? The numbers escape me. Which one was Article 9? That's the most recent one, the $1.5 Article 9 was estimated to be the drainage system, the pavement, the sidewalks, the curbing, and, the and some lighting that I will never use the word ornamental again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yes, the street lighting in lieu of the pole lighting. Is that... Is there sufficient money? 
when we have it all designed and we have it out to bid, that will be the answer to is there sufficient money. Okay, because I'm a little skeptical. The, the originals cost estimates, engineer value. cost estimates say we're, yes, we do. Right. Okay, and the 300,000, and I forget what article number it was, that was going to expire on March 31st, and you, I think I asked Fred earlier, and he said that that's... Um, so really quick, just so everybody knows, that is the feasibility study right. that was to be completed for utilities, including electric, cable, uh, telephone. telephone, computer services, mm -hmm. for those companies to do what we <clears throat> call a preliminary design, to determine if it's feasible and the associated cost estimate. Those companies have been contracted with and they are in the process of doing that study. What about that UNITIL report? That UNITIL report was the first step. Okay. UNITIL sort of dictates the, the feasibility at them being the largest entity and utility on those poles. Mm -hmm. It's that report and those alternatives that all the other utilities are using to determine theirs. So you are focused right now on the sewer and the drainage and giving a temporary coat so that the yeah. cars don't all toot their horns at you. Yes. And then the uh, side project, shall we say, sidewalks and ornamental lighting and all this stuff, you're going to wait and get reports and all estimates. Has to be designed. And still, ha yes. Still okay. has to be designed. Yeah. So we're, we're saved for the moment and you're just going on the. Yeah, the definitely. Road. We won't be in the ground this fall, that's for sure. Okay. Could you come back and tell us that again next time, please? How many times have we heard this? Yeah. What do we? No, I'm being oh. facetious. No, no. It's, I mean. I okay, so what? we have a motion and a second, and we already voted on that. So yeah. your next thing is. Next item was um, uh, 20, bid 2018-002 for landfill monitoring services. Uh -huh. um, yes. March 22nd, we opened bids. Um, we did receive seven bids this time. We have more than ten uh, qualified firms or interested firms that it went out to. Um, it is only a bid price of uh, fourteen thousand four thirty for calendar year twenty eighteen, and eleven thousand four hundred for twenty nineteen. But because it's a multi-year contract, it requires that I come before this board to ask for, well, to grant the manager permission to enter into a multi-year contract. So, need a motion? Well, to whom are we oh, going to oh, major point. Sorry, CMA engineers out of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Have they done this? They, they have their qual statement. I don't know, just right. pull it up. Are you familiar with them? Have they done this for us before, Chris? They're, they're, when they originally went into business some 25 years ago, yeah. their original uh, thrust was um, solid waste. Transfer stations, uh, land line yep. fills. I know they've done Nashua, and now they've they've morphed, if you will, a little bit in their scope of services, where even the landfills or the the uh, projects that they decommissioned, they are now doing groundwater monitoring and um, the analysis, or, or if you will, the reporting to the state. Though they're still going to use an outside laboratory, mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, and I believe it's Eastern Analytics, so the majority of them did specify that. So you're comfortable with them? I'm very comfortable with them. Okay. Um, the other thing um, you should probably know is when this bid was done two years ago, it was like 7000 and 7000 But we didn't include in that bid the actual uh, lab analysis of the groundwater samples. This time we've done that, Good. and that's why they're – it isn't like we're paying more money because I think – it's the same amount of money of what we paid out, yeah. out of, in that line, yeah. uh, but it, at least we have both the, the land, the actual reporting and the actual collection and analysis of those results. And this is also a s slightly higher because we're going to do the PFOAs again in Good. the next round. Yeah. Make a motion. I'll Mo second Motion Jim. by Jim, seconded by Mary Louise. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Can you Bye. stay, Dan, one more quick question? Well, we got one more thing for oh, them one first. One more thing for him. Sorry about that. Bicentennial Park and Ruth Simpson Park cleanup. So as many of you are aware, uh, the last storms did quite the beating down at Bicentennial Park. 
We lost a section of the pavement. Yeah. The sand has been tossed. The Jersey barriers were tossed over. Some rebar has been exposed. All the sand that's up there uh, for you know our summer enjoyment needs to be screened uh, to get all the rocks and stones out of it if it's going to be used. Um, basically, what we did uh, was we asked three contractors to provide us pricing to do this cleanup. Um, we are looking uh, at the lowest of those three uh, contractors uh, to complete the work, and that would be uh, Jamco. Uh, they came in with a total of $28,936 to complete that work. Um, we're recommending that the town accept uh, the bid that they've submitted. Um, it uh, This project does uh, apply with the purchasing policy because there were more than three qualified, but there were three qualified bidders. Make a motion that we go with their bid. Second. Motion by Jim, second by Rick. All those in favor? Oh. Unanimous. Well, I was going to ask a quick question, go, but oh, go ahead. Well, it, it just it relates to jam cows. They were out there in crummy weather last week, cleaning up Five Corners Park, mm -hmm. and they did a great job. Okay. They really did. Are you keeping pictures? Now you got the pictures of the damage to the seawall. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to file them in a nice little file folder. We file them right on the electronic drive under yeah. pictures, the date that and they're see taken and the condition next that's year. happened. And so we can start really keeping track. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. I, I have just one other question related to that. You said the re some of the rebar is showing. Mm -hmm. is, is some of the rebar showing on the, on the state wall too? I saw something sticking up in a... a there, if you're looking at our bicentennial, so yep. the parking lots and over. Yep. There's a chunk of rebar right there that is exposed. So I don't know if you thought maybe that was no, part I got of that it. Down further. Mm, I haven't seen it I on the state okay. wall, but I also was not looking yeah, on the yeah. state wall. We weren't looking for things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> more things to do. I see any more stuff. <laughs> so many else's problems. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's How, it. No, that's one real quick. Mm -hmm. How are you doing on hiring? Because I know you you, you need employees you need people um, we had to start mid-march we've made an offer to is it Jared we've made another yeah. offer yep and um, we'll be he's going through a drug and alcohol screening background yeah. screening yeah. and all that um, that we leave one position right one position open um, we did um, Mike Moran who was in wastewater is now the new carpenter uh, that leaves a vacancy in wastewater. Uh, there were two people interested within the highway. Um, one of those is that'll be a forthcoming recommendation. It'll leave us still about one short uh, going in. But also, I know the advertisement went out for all the summer help uh, to people on the back of mm -hmm. waste yep. trucks and the summer beach crew. Um, and uh, even as late as tonight, at 6 o'clock before this meeting, I scanned and emailed out a application form to a gentleman that's uh, interested in working. So we have a, a lot of interest and yeah. yes, we have candidates to pick from. Good. I'm just concerned about your staffing yep. because you, you too can't do it all. Not and that is important to note that our seasonal positions, just like everybody is having uh, here, they were posted. So yeah. it is the beach crew, a beach crew supervisor. It's highway laborer. It is uh, back of the tra uh, trash truck. It is also superintendent at the transfer station and with position at the wastewater treatment plant so anybody that has that oh. wealth of knowledge and I, you guys are going to the job, job fair. fair at the okay. kind of too Absolutely. so some of those would be great for juniors and seniors so exactly and we we did reach out through unh um the environmental <coughs> engineering section in the civil department and i know the there's been frequent emails back between um mr Duby and mr carl with a uh, UNH student to work 20 hours a week in the lab. Good. Which will in free them to do thing. other things. Seasonal help. It would seasonal fall under our seasonal right. labor because we do keep one in the wastewater treatment plant as well. It's a concern because no, no, we no, care no, about no. you down there because you've got a, we appreciate it. You've got um, a heck of a burden. You know, we, we, we've heard you've had like 20 openings that are coming, but you're filling them. As they, we are as filling they come, them as they as become, they come available. available. You're filling them, so you're right. not down 20 employees, which no. Kind of at work, we were down four at one point. But right, that, but yeah. you're filling those positions. Yes, yeah. right. we have. So, yeah. except for the fact. 
that we're losing 30 year employees and we're taking 30 year employees have a right to retire i know that but i'm saying then you're not replacing them with people of the same experience because you're going to take because they wouldn't be here that long you want to get your own experience in in some respects we are we aren't um um, three months four months ago i I had a gentleman first name of jane uh, john he's a town resident but at age 54, he brings a wealth of experience Absolutely. to the, to okay, the town. Right. Yet at the same time, we just hired JP, I'll call him for short, because that's his nickname. Um, JP's like 18, so he brings energy. That so uh, they're not doing things aren't the same in a farming today background. as they were 30 years ago either. Yeah. So we got to keep replenishing new blood. Yeah, yeah, we, we've been so, kind of conscious mm-hmm. about picking not everybody of the same, not all 18 year olds, mm-hmm. because. Yeah. Um, all different personalities. All They'll different all retire levels. 30 years from now, and this, <laughs> yeah. that select or that public works director will have would have that. So no, we've been yes, we've been will. looking for right mixes of, of people's <laughs> energies and experiences uh, to put in these various positions. 30 years from now, we won't be filling the spots. We'll both be retired. <laughs> I'm sure somebody will call. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Why folks. did you do what you did? Yeah. Thank, Thank you very, you. very much. Yeah. Charlie Preston, are you in the back room? Ah, look at that. Just like Santa Claus. You ask Santa Claus to show up, and he does. <laughs> you better be careful. You might get some competition. Yeah, yeah. You'll lose it. <laughs> That's his job for life. <laughs> Good evening, Charlie. Hey, Charlie, how I'm are Santa's you? I'm Santa's brother. That's what I tell the kids. <laughs> it works, too. Um, let's see. I had a... I think it's a rerun of last year, but. Uh oh, paperwork. There we go. It's nice your younger brother stayed here to be with you. Yeah, younger brother. (laughs) (laughs) Must be the hair color. (laughs) (laughs) I was here to talk about the um, same thing as I was here for last year. And it's Charlie Preston, 47 Glade Path. Um, I was here last January 23rd, and it was about putting a gate in the, in the, the back. The gate's already there. That's, that is to scale what you have. Um, the next meeting where a decision was made, the, meeting, the first meeting that came was January 23rd. The next one was June 5th. And when the meeting was in the town manager's conference room upstairs, in a public comment, I spoke and said that um, by using this back gate, it's half the distance to 101. It's you only have two crosswalks. Versus if you now you go up G Street, you cross 13 crosswalks and you go a mile. In old business at that meeting, six five, there was a three to two vote was the chairman and, um, well, Rusty and Jim opposed it. Um, Fred spoke and said that, you know, they were going to do a trial, Wednesday fireworks, Sunday night activities. Let's see how it works. DPW, police, and fire and parks are all in favor of trying. Nothing to lose. If there's a problem, just close the gate. I, I don't think, you know, and I don't know, I stand to be corrected, but I don't think there was a problem with, with what happened there last year. You know, I'm not a Johnny come lately on this parking lot. I've worked on it for years from paving to striping to lighting. And, you know, I think there's a lot of things, a, a, a lot of things we can do. This is for the residents that want to get into the heart of the beach, then easily ex- exit while helping support the town's recreation fund. It's common sense and a win-win for residents and the children of this town. In 2007, I know I brought this up recently, but some people at home might not understand it, but in 2007, Article 44, March 13th, balloting in 07, on the petition of Charlie Press and at least 25 voters, shall we adopt the provisions of RSA 3195C to restrict 20% 20% of the gross lease and rental income from the town's parking areas located in the Hampton Beach Village District to the purpose of construction or reconstruction of recreation infrastructure within the town of Hampton. 
Such revenues and expenditures shall be accounted for in a special revenue fund separate from the general fund to be known as the Hampton Recreation Infrastructure Fund per RSA 3195D. Any surplus in said fund shall not be deemed part of the general fund accumulated surplus. This will be a non-lapsing account per RSA 3236. The annual recreation in infrastructure project will be, turned by the, will be determined by the Board of Selectmen, the Town Manager, and the Director of Public Works each year and shall be expended only after a vote by the legislative body to approve a specific amount from the said fund for a specific purpose related to the purpose of the fund or the source of the revenue. The first appropriation for this fund should be de devoted to the recreation of the tennis basketball courts at Tuck Field. The result of this vote was 1,477 A's to 1,064 nays. Um, I think we've all seen the improvements to this town since the basketball court and tennis courts and all over the parks that are created by this fund. And, and I, I, I explained at the time, Mary Louise helped me write this, and, and I needed help because if you don't write that, just write, and Bonnie Searle helped me. <laughs> and I don't think anybody would have put the three of us together, but when a couple of former selectmen offered me help, I said, I'll take it anywhere I can get it. Anything you know, and for you, Charlie. I, I appreciated the help because it, you know, the, the next article is a different, it was a different story. But anyway, even Bonnie, and I told you this recently, that Bonnie helped me write one, and she opposed me on it. Came in for here and opposed me. And, you know, both articles passed, but people can work together with different, different opinions. I'd really appreciate it if this board would open that gate up and when I, to, to exit. And I realize you might be doing something different with management down there. I don't know what the story is. I haven't been involved in that. What I gave you in that drawing that's to scale, the person that was running that last year, or in the past few years, was concerned about people cheating coming in. And I said, by choking this down, you can see where I highlighted it. By choking that down to 12 feet, it makes it hard for someone to do a radius. I also don't think it's an issue if, if it's being run by the police and the cameras and signage. And I think it's a win-win. I know last year we talked about having it for events, the casino and the fireworks and that. I, that doesn't do anything for me. I'm looking as a resident of Hampton. I want to get in the heart of the beach. I want to get out. And I want 20% of my money to go to the parks and recreation of this town for the kids. I think it's a great thing, and I would really appreciate your consideration. Thank you very much. Mary Louise, um, any questions? Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. If, if, it's, le if it's legal and if it doesn't cause a problem, you know, for the police department or whatever, it seems like a sensible solution. Jim? But I'm not an expert at the beach, but. Yeah, I, I still would, I'd like to have a, just a report on, on how it did, did go last year. I mean, I know you said there wasn't any problems or anything, but I, I think a report from the you know, police or fire there and stuff, whether they had any problems with it. And also, if it is under new management this year, a report from them before we t do anything, before we take any votes or anything. But I'd, I'd be open to the discussion. Okay. Sure. Yeah, and I think that th they um, should take your work into consideration mm -hmm. and it should be part of um, the decision making when yep. the decisions are made. Okay. <clears throat> if I could add one thing, I, I did speak to the chief informally and he told me something's going on with the operation of it, but um, I also threw something out there which I had thrown out in the past because I know that you're considering some form of automation and I mentioned it to Rich this week that you could possibly consider whether it was a full time or a temporary basis making that lot almost like two lots because they have that road that goes from bottom of F Street to the police. You could actually put a fence uh, right down the side of that road to the north of that, and then this lot could also be used, you know, with the, with the kiosks. So you could have a little bit of both. You could have event parking. You could have the thing. It's just a consideration. I mentioned to Rich, and he said, that's something to think about. Okay. And, and, then, and then maybe some other amenities that... I've come in and asked for in the past, like you have some dead corners on the, on the northwest corner of that lot, on the northeast corner of the lot, northwest corner of the lot, that if maybe we could stripe, you know, because that's something that's not costing a lot of money, you know, bike racks, 
some striping like they do up in the end of um, High Street. They, they, they have spots for scooters. And, and designate those and let kids that work at the beach yeah, have a park in them for free. Yep. They're sitting there now dead. They can't be used. So just stripe them like you do on the other end of the beach and make the kids come in when they register their car, get a resident sticker. Good. Good. And, um, you know, it would help. It's a good idea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alrighty. Thanks, Charlie. Town manager's report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the last day to file for property tax exemptions is April 16th, 2018. You should see the assessor's office for the required forms and information. And for those of you who are going to file for a veteran's exemption, please have your DD-214 with you. That's very important. Uh, please register your dog. All dog <laughs> licenses expire on April 30th, 2018. The last date of file for current use assessment and conservation restriction assessment is April 16th. Work began on the repair, repair of the Church Street sewer force main today. Uh, you heard Public Works address that. The parking lot for the Church Street pump station will be locked and closed uh, until the work is completed. Church Street and summer, uh, summer parking lot will be open for use free of charge during the period of time of the construction. The tax collector's office will be closed on Wednesday, April 18th. They have to undergo annual training with the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we also have coming on uh, Thursday, May 10th, at the Master School Cafeteria, uh, a public hearing by the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Uh, topics of the agenda are the transportation grant for Route 1A, the Hampton Beach traffic flow, parking areas at Hampton Beach, and traffic and pedestrian safety issues. Please attend. This is part of the 10-year DOT plan. It's very important that people attend. And the last thing I have is that, <clears throat> to answer some questions that have been asked the last few weeks, last Wednesday, um, the new per owners of the Swanee Nose Brewery came in and paid all back taxes in the amount of $161,413.08. Wow. Super. So that's all been paid. Everything's up to date. Thank you, sir. Any questions for the town manager? I don't have any. That's uh, just super on, on the back taxes being paid. Yes, That's great. It's a good thing. Thank yeah. you for your report. Thank yeah. you, sir. Mayor Louise? Last week you wouldn't let me do questions. Well, no, it's <laughs> on, his, on his report. The, quest yeah. the questions um, are on yes, what he just I, talked I about. I do have a question on the, um, the fee, the industrial surcharge fee, Fred. Are we going to get some information on that? how you phrase the vote to the motion to vote on applying the fee because this wouldn't just apply to smutty nose this would be that's uh, on the that's old business that's, yeah, that's not, not on, on the town old business see you ask questions on but one two three four five I've, this is on, this, but, but I've asked the manager if he could get back to us on the smutty nose well that's Bring what that you do under old, old business, business. Right. Yeah, okay so we're under, now we're under old business <laughs> Fred. Sir, uh, we would like you to accept under old business, vote to accept a quick claim deed to the town from Equine Properties LLC, land previously proposed to be donated by Tuck Realty Corporation and accepted on 71017 as parcel A, map 150, lot, 160, lot 52, containing 1.33 acres. This property is the property that we're looking for to finish or start the dam construction. It's being donated to the town. So I make a, and, and Mark gave us a, a memo on that, right? Yes, yes, he did. Yeah, I make yeah. a motion that we accept it. Second. second. Finish what, Fred? The this dam. Is, this is so yes. we can finish the okay. dam. So yes. the motion Excellent. second. It. All those in favor? Unanimous. Super. Anything on it's under old business? Mary Louise. Have we any um, draft <coughs> or statutory reference or anything on those industrial surcharge fees? Public Works is working on the revised sewer regulations. That is part of it. Excellent. And, and uh, they are just about finished for their critique. They'll be sending it up to me for review, and then we're going to have a meeting with staff and make some decisions on where we go with it and, and report it to the board. Yeah, because I'd like to have the ducks in a row if we can, you know, by, by the time they're asking to actually uh, take over the 
beer producing function. Well, it won't be part of their permit <laughs> because it'll be part of the regulations. Okay. So they'll be forced to obey it whether they like to or not. Well. That's what? just the way the rules work. Uh, it's just like a okay. statute. I mean, you have a permit so to do something. So we won't have to vote on it. Well, you will have to vote on it eventually, but it's similar to the way the legislature works. That is to say that in this particular case, what you have is you have a, a group of laws that are together as regulations, okay. and you'll vote to approve those, and the enforcement becomes part of the Public Works Department's operations. So on a this will basis. be on the books for any other entity that for might be uh, liable to have a, uh, a fee like that. I That's appreciate correct. that from. The town manager's mouth to God's ear, right? I don't know about that. <laughs> I didn't know my wife was listening. <laughs> but thank you for that. Jeez. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anything else? Apparently, to no old business? No, thank you. I was just worried Jim. about that. I'm set. Rick. I'm fine, too. Thank you. Okay. New business. Ah. Updates the codes. Uh, we have some transfer station stickers that need to be relocated. As you know, the Registry of Motor Vehicles, the Department of Safety, uh, has required the uh, removal of the inspection sticker from behind the rearview mirror on the front windshield. Yeah. And the reason for that is because there's so much electronic material these days for yeah. toll passing and so forth that those items have to be right there where that sticker was. They've moved it down in the lower left-hand corner of the front windshield. We'd like to take the town's sticker for uh, the transfer station and put it on the upper left-hand corner of that front windshield. So pe they have to be able to see it as you pull into the transfer station without getting out walking around the vehicle. Uh, so that's that's what we're doing here. We're, we're changing the, uh, the location. We're changing the definitions, uh, the vehicles, and, and where it's placed. Um, and the definitions of the of the uh, the sticker itself, so that it complies with all of that material, and it's in the regulations properly. I make a motion that we okay. go with the transfer recommendation. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. We also have, Mr. Chairman, a a, uh, a request for the board to approve uh, the purchase of a 2019 F-250 pickup truck for the fire department in the amount of $35,523. That includes completely equipping the vehicle with lights, uh, radios. Uh, this is on a state bid, so the board needs to approve it. This is the lowest price we can get. We didn't go out and bid this. The state's already bid it for us, so they, in fact, have these vehicles available and in stock for us to pick up. Just that this one will be painted red as opposed to some I'll make color. that motion. Seconded by uh, second. Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, just one quick question, if I may, on that purchase, because I'm getting gun shy now on the uh, electrical systems in trucks and all on the rusting and all that stuff. This looks okay, Fred? It's a standard it's a motor standard vehicle. vehicle. Um, okay. Same as you would have a regular pickup truck. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it is a heavy duty truck, but uh, it does not have military. Uh, hardware Wiring, on it for yeah. installation as far as water is concerned. I'm just a little nervous about <laughs> vehicles. I understand. For the exception, acceptance of the, the surety. <laughs> oh. 92. 92 Ashworth <laughs> Avenue in the amount of $4,900. Londo. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Motion. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. We have a, somebody requested an I annual did. employee hours worked for HPD. Um, what's your questions? Well, it appears as though some employees may be working to the point that it might be dangerous for their health or dangerous in their responses on the street. I don't know. That would um, be a contract negotiation, so. That would be, and that would have come up during contract the, negotiations. There's an auto, well, I, I would just like to see basically how many hours a year John Doe is working. Actually, it's in the town report. Town report it's in the, has a, It's listed under the, all the pay, 
for employees that listed the town report as well as the number of hours they work. Okay, I'll, then I'll backtrack on yeah. that. Okay, you should thank be you. privately with the chief of police and well, ask I him the questions, and then you'll be bother. able to bring it up when we um, work I don't on the contract. Bother him. And well, the that's what you need to do if you want to know about the contract. So when that gets brought up, you'll be equipped. Okay, and the non-union raises. We got this classification and compensation study because I would like to not draggle out till November on the non-union raises. We just got this today, yeah, so I, saw I would that. suggest that we have um, Jamie. Jamie come in maybe next week or yep. the week That's after right. yep. to, to look at it. This gives you a week or so to go through this and, and look at it. Yeah. It's quite extensive reading. I Absolutely. Read it today. Yeah. Absolutely. So we'll, within the next couple of weeks, we'll have him in here. Okay. So. Okay. New business. Uh, one quick thing. I know we had the, the, the fire at the beach. Uh, yes. One of the things that was in that building was the soup kitchen. Yeah. Uh, they need a place to hold for the five, five weeks. Uh, I was in discussion with the uh, fire chief today, and he's working on that to possibly uh, allow them to be able to do that there. And uh, at the fire station to at least let them serve their, their meals there. Wow. And uh, I think that's something that this board should be behind. I think this is something that this... Uh, I'll make that motion. Good, that we allow the chief, yes. to, if he can work it out, to be uh, have the ability to yeah. do it. Under I'll his direction. It. Under his direction. All right. I have a motion and a second. Fortunately, it's the new station. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, the other thing is I heard uh, that... Um, the police union is in the process of sending us a letter for negotiations. So That's they my make, understanding. So they were going to, uh, we'll have to start looking at that yep. for their contracts. Mm. Anything else? Wow. Um, I think it's Closing good. comments? I'd like to comment that you did a wonderful meeting tonight, Rusty. Thank you. Super. Thank you. <laughs> you must be tired from the, uh, but you did a great job. Thank you. I make a motion that we adjourn at 8.17. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much, Channel 22. Uh